you're cruising along, intermittent fasting, everything's just going hunky-dory, totally fine, then all of a sudden you start gaining weight. Like everything, all the power of fasting just went out the window and you're just wanting to throw in the towel because you're doing everything right, but it's just not working anymore. All right, we're gonna talk about why some people actually gain weight when they do intermittent fasting and why you might be experiencing this even after years of practicing intermittent fasting. So we're gonna break them down. I'm gonna give you some tangible things that you can do to fix them. But first, you're tuned into the Internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I wanna make sure you hit that bell button so you turn on notifications, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Also, down below in the description, I want you to check out Yujito Matcha. The Yujito Matcha is a really interesting company. They've managed to take the most powerful ceremonial grade matcha and put it into a tasty on the go form. Now, they also have other forms as well, but quite honestly, when it comes down to fasting, when it comes down to the ketogenic diet, or when it comes down to just getting the most out of your body, high quality green tea is where it's at. So I want you to go ahead and check them out after you watch this video. There's a special discount, special price for anyone that is a fan of my channel or who watches my videos. So big thanks to them and check them out after the video. Now, let's go ahead and let's get into the good stuff here. Okay, the number one thing that I first want you to look at when it comes down to your intermittent fasting protocol and if you're not having results or if you're gaining weight is are you combining your fats and carbs when you break a fast? Okay, it's something I talk about a lot, right? You should never combine your fats and carbs or at least knowingly. Little bits and pieces like almonds, things like that, where there's a couple grams of carbs from fiber and stuff like that, don't worry about that. But when it comes down to just life in general, carbs and fats should never be combined. But there's one glaring problem when it comes down to intermittent fasting. At the end of a fast, you are so hyper insulin sensitive. What I mean by that is your body just is ready to just absorb anything that you put in it. So that means the power of a carbohydrate inside your body is exponential. That single carbohydrate is exponentially more powerful at spiking your insulin because your body is just ready to go. That insulin is just, it's chomping at the bit. It's there, it's there, it's there. As the carb comes, boom, it skyrockets. So what that means is when you have that carbohydrate, your insulin levels go higher and that means the fat that you are consuming too goes into the cell too. You see insulin opens the cell doorway so that carbs can come in, but when the door is open, fat can come in too. Now I'm a big proponent of good high fat diets, but not in conjunction with carbs, especially when you break a fast. And it's so easy when you break a fast to just wanna go and like eat a burrito or eat a taco or eat a piece of cake. It's really easy to wanna do that. So you have to make sure that you break your fast with either one or the other, a fat and a protein or a carb and a protein, but not a fat and carb together. This mistake ends up killing so many people's progress and ends up backfiring on them. So that's rule number one, okay? Let's focus on that. The next one is people fasting too much, okay? The fact of the matter is, is that if you start fasting too much, you eventually drive your metabolism down. Now, that's not always a bad thing. Let me say this, a slower metabolism doesn't necessarily constitute a fat person or doesn't necessarily constitute a bad metabolism. You see, it's an evolutionary process for us. It's natural. If we have a slower metabolism, it just means that we're adapted to eating less food. It's not really bad, okay? But here's where it becomes an issue, is if you have been progressively fasting and you've been or decreasing your calories because of that, well, eventually your metabolism is gonna to adjust to that. So if you are fasting, and you're only eating a thousand calories per day because you only have a couple hours to eat and you're just not that hungry, well, your metabolism is going to adjust to that. And that's a normal, healthy, quite advantageous thing until you eat extra calories. You see, you've been eating a thousand calories a day, a thousand calories a day, a thousand calories a day, and then, yeah, you decide, no, I've got plenty of wiggle room. I've been in a deficit for a while. This thousand calorie thing is a deficit. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bump it back up to 1500 because heck, I can get away with eating more. Well, newsflash, your body reset to that 1,000, and now that's the norm. So when you do go back up to 12 or 1,300, you're gonna gain weight, and you're gonna gain it fast. And you're gonna be like, oh, intermittent fasting ruined my body, it broke me. It didn't break you, your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Intermittent fasting just enhanced what it's supposed to do. In fact, let's take a look at a study that actually proves that intermittent fasting improves your metabolism, and even a longer fast improves your metabolism. This study was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Okay?
Okay, it took a look at subjects, particularly lean subjects. So uh, subjects that didn't even have a whole lot of fat to burn. Looked at 11 of them and it had them go on an 84 hour fast. So it measured a lot of different things over the course of these 84 hours. But on days one, two, and three, they measured their basal metabolic rate or their resting metabolic rate. Like how fast their metabolism was at rest. Well, on day one, they were at 3.97 kilojoules per minute. Then on day three, they were at 4.53 kilojoules per minute. Now, that's some complex jargon, but all that means is that they had an increase in their metabolism. They burned more calories per minute on day three of a fast than they did on day one. So don't let people tell you that fasting is gonna slow your metabolism down during a fast. That's not the case. If anything, it revs it up. Why? Because you have a big increase in adrenaline and particularly norepinephrine. Norepinephrine gets our body temperature up. It gets things going. So that is a very, very good thing. We want more epinephrine. We want a faster metabolism. Where the problem occurs is how little we eat when we're supposed to eat. Okay, so it's important that you keep your calories up while you are fasting or in your eating window. And if you've already gone too far, you need to slowly increase them in a very strategic way. And I mean like write them down to where you're increasing calories, 50 calories per week until you're back where you want to be. That's about the norm for an average sized person. If you increase 50 calories per week, you should be able to just get back up to a normal level. Another thing that you can do is if you do not already do a ketogenic diet along with fasting is you can implement ketogenic principles because you will get a little bit more leeway with your calories. It'll allow you to get your calories up a little bit more without the negative impact of gaining as much fat. So you can drive your metabolism, your resting metabolic rate a little bit higher without the immediate fat storage or fat gain. Okay, the number three mistake, and quite honestly, this is actually one of the most common ones, is it's still having bulletproof coffee or fat coffee in the morning. I hate to break it to you, and I sound like a broken record. I've talked about this so many times, but the problem is not everyone sees every single one of my videos. Fat coffee, keto coffee, butter coffee, ghee coffee, coconut oil in your coffee breaks a fast. Bulletproof coffee breaks a fast. You are not fasting if you have it. Now, people think I'm going on an intermittent fast and I'm still having my bulletproof coffee and then I'm not losing weight or I'm gaining weight. Just so you know, bulletproof coffee is anywhere from 250 to 450 calories depending on how you make it. That is definitely breaking a fast and that is a lot of calories and if you are not on a ketogenic diet, having those amounts of fats at one sitting could very well lead to a large accumulation of fat. Fat stores easily, so don't do that if you're not on a keto diet along with your fasting. Do your intermittent fasting, have your black coffee, a little bit of stevia, a little bit of monk fruit. Save the bulletproof coffee for a day that you're not fasting. Okay, don't fast every day. Keto coffee some days, fasting days, keep it clean. Okay, the next one is malnutrition. All right, now, hopefully if you're watching this video, you know enough to know that you should probably get a balanced diet while you are intermittent fasting. But what people don't often realize is that malnutrition occurs relatively fast if you're fasting frequently. Now, I don't mean malnutrition during the fasted state, okay? Studies have shown that most of the time while you're fasting, your body does a pretty good job of balancing out minerals and reallocating vitamins and water soluble vitamins. It does a pretty good job. In fact, there are some studies that show that even over the course of really long fasts, the body still managed to find homeostasis with its minerals with the exception of magnesium. It did cause a chronic issue with magnesium, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The fact is, the issue comes with when we eat, we're not getting enough nutrients, we're getting the wrong things. It's so common for people to just fast and then they get so hungry they go and they have a burger and then they're full because their stomach shrank during the fast so they never get a chance to eat their broccoli. They never get a chance to eat what they should be eating. They never get a chance to get the nutrients they should be getting. And eventually, they end up in a malnourished state. And when we have malnourishment, we have all kinds of issues that arise. The body then grabs onto other things and stores other things. We have increases in cortisol that we shouldn't have. And then we have fat accumulation that occurs at an accelerated rate. So we have to be very, very conscious there. So don't just let yourself just eat whatever. Be strategic about it. And this is where it's very important to have a plan. 
write down what you're going to break your fast with and write down what your dinner is going to be and then have a little bit of flexibility. You may say, I like intermittent fasting because I get flexibility. You can have that flexibility, but you have to first have a plan. With great flexibility like that also comes great responsibility. It's kind of like owning a business or anything else. If you want the flexibility, you gotta, you gotta have some discipline too. All right, now we've got the very last one. Weight train while you're doing your fasting protocols. Way too many people disregard their weight training. Now, I don't care if you've never weight trained a day in your life. If you start intermittent fasting, you should pick up at least some small weights. What's gonna happen is if you are fasting, the natural inclination over time is that the body will start to break down proteins. It's natural. Eventually, if you are not using it, you will lose it. So you have to, while you are intermittent fasting, pick up some weights. Because what it's gonna do, it's gonna activate mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, which is going to allow those muscles to retain their size, possibly even grow, and therefore keep your resting metabolic rate high. What you don't realize, especially if you're not already incredibly lean, is that as you fast, if you start to lose some muscle, your resting metabolic rate's gonna drop. And that means that your metabolism is gonna slow down. But you can keep your metabolism high by keeping the muscle on you. And if you're not super lean, you may not realize that after a month or two months, you've lost muscle. You just weigh less, so you think you're losing weight. But you have to get in the gym. I promise you that if you fast and do a little bit of weightlifting, you will retain your muscle and you will burn more fat and your metabolism will stay higher. So if you're brand new to it, just do it. A little bit, two, three days per week, trust me, it will make a big difference. So anyhow, I hope this cleared some things up and can get you over those little hurdles and make it so you're not gaining weight while you're intermittent fasting. I'll see you soon. Make sure you're keeping it locked in here on all my other videos.